Hey guys, welcome back and thanks a lot for so much positive feedback from the last video. This week, as we work towards being ready to plank the boat, we're going to be focusing mainly on the floors, which are the big bronze brackets which hold the frames down to the keel timber, and also the transom, which Patrick would describe as the big flat bit at the back. Before that though, Pete and Clark are working on just finishing off the deck structure. They're going to put a decorative bead on the bottom corner of the beam shelf and they're going to varnish that. Look of pure concentration there. But it's not. It's fit. We've already sealed it. <laughs> well, yeah. You can just yeah, say yeah. we we just done okay. it. We just sealed it. Okay. Okay. Well, now I need to go back a week and a half in my head. Yeah, it's very tough, Two isn't it? This times. acting. I should be paying you extra for yeah, the I acting. <laughs> part, I guess. Um, okay. Are you still rolling? Yeah. Okay. Great. Okay, well, Leo wanted to, wanted me to say a few words about the uh, decorative bead we put in the bottom of the beam shelf here. I guess the video footage he got of us doing it was mostly just me cursing. This was, uh, we did this after install, after all the deck beams were in. Um, so we routed it pretty much the whole length. Uh, gives it a little classy touch. Um, it's highly visible throughout most of the boat. So, um, yeah. That's great. Looks really good. Sure does. Yeah. So this is part of Tally Ho's original transom. Now, since I realized how thorough a rebuild this was going to be, I've tried not to talk too much about what I might be able to reuse or not from the original boat, because you just don't know until you get there. But I've always been quietly hopeful that I might be able to reuse part of the transom timbers. They're lovely, wide, thick boards of teak, so of course they haven't rotted, which is great, but they have got a lot of fastening holes in them, uh, a lot of big bungs, a lot of graving pieces, and a lot of tiny nail holes from when she was copper sheathed near the beginning of her life. So I still don't know if it's going to be possible, but I would love to reuse part of the transom if I can. So I'm going to clean these up, get the fastenings out, and have a better look at them. So while I've been working on the transom, Pete and Clark have been working really hard on making the floor templates. It's a big job and it's quite technical and for that reason and also because we haven't started casting them yet, we're actually going to completely ignore the floors in this video and then in the next video, or at least very soon, we're going to be able to show the whole process of making the floors from start to finish, discussing material, pattern making, shrinkage, strength calculations and so on, and hopefully actually doing some pouring. For now though, you're just going to have to take my word for it that the guys are working really hard, not just hanging around drinking coffee, and you will see that footage very soon, and then it'll be my turn to look like I'm not doing any work. Hey Clark. What's up? Are you about ready to never ever see a floor template again? No man, this is fun. Yeah. 
As, uh, huh. as mundane as it seems, there's actually a lot of tricks to it, and you, you learn a lot doing it. It's a little repetitive, but... <laughs> Clark, Clark got to learn spiling yesterday. I did. Uh-huh. That's fun. It only took me three <laughs> hours <laughs> to do it. Should have taken an hour. <laughs> You'll be making a plank in three hours once you get the hang of spiling. So having cleaned up the boards of the transom, although you can see there's a lot of small and large holes in it, um, the timber itself is mostly in very good condition. And that's thanks to this being teak, which is very, very oily and very rot resistant. So I'm really hopeful that we can reuse these parts of the transom. Unfortunately, I never had the entire original transom because the top two planks were already replaced when I got the boat with an inferior wood. But I'm gonna try and use these bottom three planks of teak and try and get some more teak to match it for the top two. Now, most of these holes won't be a problem. They can either be plugged or filled, but what is a problem is the screws that go through the very ends of the planks and screw into the end grain of the transom timbers. This is always a bit of a problematic fastening because you're screwing into end grain, which isn't ideal in the first place. And then because this has already been screwed into, there's gonna be lots of old holes. There's also quite a few checks and just general damage around all the edges of the transom here. So I wouldn't want to fasten the new planks into that area. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the old transom and just drop it slightly. And that will mean that I can cut off the end grain, cut off the edges of the timbers on both ends. And of course, because that'll bring all the original timbers down on the stern of the boat, that'll leave a little bit more space above to fill with new teak, but that's fine. And it's worth it to be able to reuse this stuff and to have a nice clean timber to fasten into. Now, although the original transom was painted, I think it would be really nice, if possible, to varnish it. There'll be a lot of repairs and graving pieces visible uh, if it's varnished, but I think they'll just add to the character and I think it will be really nice to see some of the original timbers of the boat uh, in such a prominent location. You can see what beautiful grain this timber has. You know, this is real old growth teak. So even with loads of holes and graving pieces in it, it's still gonna look amazing and have loads of character. So I'm thinking of varnishing the transom instead of painting it. If I do that though, I'm gonna to have to repair it very carefully and also all the repairs are gonna to have to be the same timber, so it looks good. But luckily with all the planks that we took off, um, I've got an almost endless supply of small pieces of teak here. I'm hoping to reuse a lot of this stuff in the interior, but in the meantime, I can use it for fastenings, for graving pieces, for bits of the hatches and so on, anywhere where I need a relatively small piece. So here's a piece of planking. And as you can see, there's a lot of fastening holes in it, but these bits in between should clean up pretty nicely.
So you may have noticed that I haven't used much glue in rebuilding Tally Ho so far. And that's because, in general, I prefer to rely on mechanical fastenings, which also happens to be the way that they built the boat originally, and she would have lasted pretty well if it wasn't for the ferrous metals. But when doing something like repairing the transom, uh, there's really no other practical way than to use the glue. And in these cases, there's many different glues that could be used, but the glue that I often find myself using is polyurethane glue, um, which there's some here. The brand is really irrelevant, it's polyurethane glue, lots of different people make them, but I've always had good luck with it in the past and I've found it's lasted well and been very strong. It is fully waterproof, it is used a lot in boat building. Polyurethane is not structurally gap filling, but as long as your plugs or your graving pieces are nice and tight and you have a good wood to wood connection, then there's no need for it to be structurally gap filling. So I'm just on my way to see a guy called Norm. I bought some old bronze rod from Norm a while ago, and I just remembered that he had some big pieces of teak that he said he might be willing to part with. So we're gonna go check that out now and see if it might be suitable for the transom. Okay, so I'm down at Norm's place and we've been looking at some of the timber he's got here in his workshop and indeed there's some really nice teak here which I think is going to work well for the transom. Uh, Norm's given me a really good price on it, um, so that's great and going to take it back and machine it up hopefully. But there's also some other really interesting stuff in this workshop so I thought you guys might like to meet Norm and see what he's building. Yeah, I'm Norm Coot and um, this is my lower shop, having the machine shop in the other end of the building. This little thing right here is a Q2 aircraft. It's made of foam and fiberglass. We'll have a 100 horse converted Corvair engine from the automobile back in the 60s. This is what it looks like at the top of a loop. <laughs> it's, it's upside down right now. <laughs> of course the engine is off of it and the, the tail cone which is behind you goes out here. It generates the third phase. Okay. Wow, that was great. <laughs> Did you see that? Yeah. <laughs> That's so cool. I'd never thought of doing it like that. Other than that, we have some boats on the ceiling. One is a racing boat that we use for several years. The uh, other one there is a 16 foot 8 inch Steve Redmond uh, Wisp and then a 13 foot a uh, rowboat that I built way back in the 80s. I designed it. Did you build all those boats, Norm? Yes, yeah. That one there was built probably 20 years ago. Has never been in the water. Oh, really? <laughs> it's never been baptized yet. Oh, yeah. So you want to launch it? <laughs> yeah. Maybe someday. Yeah. Do you think you will fly this plane? I don't know. <laughs> I'm getting older. <laughs> yeah, how, how old are you? Uh, 82. Oh. Yeah, so. But uh, we'll see. I have a friend who would like to test fly it. He's well, good luck with it, Norm. You're doing a great job and hope you get to fly in it one way or the other. Yeah, I hope to see it go in the air whether I'm in it or not. I'm sure you will. Yeah.
What are you doing there, Clark? I am either outright replacing or just rotating all the little cutting heads on the planer here. So I'm going through and feeling the back of all the cutting surfaces with my fingernail, kind of like a fishing hook. If you can feel it grab your fingernail, it's sharp enough. If not, you gotta rotate it 90 degrees. And if they're all bad, and you throw a brand new one on. And there is, I don't know, probably 300, 200, 300, 250 uh, little cutting heads on this thing. It's pretty impressive. <laughs> yeah, I haven't counted them. Does it make you nervous putting your fingers in there, Clark? No, not really. Should it? <laughs> no, just we made sure it's unplugged. There we go. Just for everybody at home. Now the planks of the original transom were joined together with vertical bronze pins and there was also a little bit of corking cotton in the seams. Now it looks to me as if that corking cotton was added later on, like it wasn't original, which suggests that the seams on the transom might have leaked a little bit at some point. Transom planks can often be corked in the same way as hull planks, but as I'm having to varnish the transom, a corking seam, even after it's filled with putty, uh, would spoil the sort of clean timber aesthetic. So I've decided to lock the planks together and make them watertight by using vertical splines. So this is a first spline that I've made and these are going to sit vertically in between the planks in grooves or slots which are going to be machined on the edges of the plank. So there's a couple of things about these splines. First of all, they're softwood, this is Douglas fir, and the reason for that is that if there ever is any water ingress into the seam, this piece of softwood will get a little bit wet and will swell up, sealing that seam really well. So it'll work the same way as a stopwater if you're familiar with those. The other thing is the grain on this, which I've cut so the grain runs diagonally across the spline. And that is so the grain crosses the seam between the two planks, which means there's not one line of grain running along the middle of this spline, right where the seam is, because that would be much more likely to split and then not be doing anything at all.
Okay, so as you can see, there's now a transom in the boat, which I'm very pleased about, of course. It took a little longer than I thought because the repairs just kept going on and on. Every time I thought I was nearly there, I kept finding more spots that had to be repaired. But it's dry fitted now and I'm really pleased with it. I think it looks great. The original timbers have come out really well. The new timbers look really good and they match each other, which is great. So I think it's really gonna be worth the extra effort it took to repair this piece nicely and to reuse the original teak. Uh, in a sense, this is the first part of the skin, if you like, of the boat that is going back on. So I think it's quite fitting that it's mostly original timber. There's a little bit more work to do on it. I've got to take it off, sand it a little bit finer, plug up a last couple of holes, because of course there's a couple more, put it back on with a bit of red lead, fasten it for good, and then plug up the fastening holes and give it a coat of varnish, and then it'll look really nice. Also, next time we're gonna be looking in a lot more detail at the floor templates, and hopefully actually pouring some bronze. But that's all we've got time for right now, so thanks a lot for watching, and a massive thank you to everyone who's donated or otherwise supported the Tallyho project. It does make a huge difference, and it means I'm able to take the time to make and edit these videos, so I really, really appreciate it. I'll see you guys next time. Cheers.